How wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video, we're once again going to discuss a somewhat unusual organism that was just discovered that currently does not make a lot of sense. An organism referred to as Scoliomonas litria that seems to be the first of its kind to be discovered without basically any sign of mitochondria. And that by itself is strange for reasons we're going to be discussing in this video. And so let's discuss all of this, but first let's actually discuss mitochondria and of course talk about previous discoveries from the last few years. Actually not so long ago, in a video you can find in the description, we discussed an unusual parasite that seems to infect salmon that was also strangely discovered to possess no mitochondria whatsoever. In other words, this organism was not actually breathing in the same way like a lot of other eukaryotes and seemed to be using some other techniques. But the first such organism was originally found in 2016. You can find a paper about this in the description. And more and more similar discoveries have been made in the last few years, with all of them being a part of a group of eukaryotes now referred to as metamonads. These are technically what's known as a protist, so basically not an animal, not a fungi and not a plant, but an organism containing a nucleus and most of the advanced organelles we usually find in various eukaryotes. But a lot of these metamonads, which are actually a really large group, unusually were lacking mitochondria. And the first assumption here was that we basically discovered some kind of a primitive eukaryote before those cells joined with mitochondria, giving birth to everything else. But eventually, biologists realized that this was incorrect, because many of them did contain leftovers of what seemed to be either mitochondrial DNA or even mitochondrial structures. And so they essentially lost mitochondria over time. Quite a lot of them still contain what's known as hydrogenosomes, which produce hydrogen, and sometimes even small structures known as mitosomes. But because a lot of these organisms also turn out to be parasites, or in some rare cases were living as symbionts with something else, eventually it all made sense. Many of these metamonads were basically able to consume all of the energy needed and no longer needed mitochondria. Or at least this was the case for the ones discovered so far. And so basically any protist that was a parasite seemed to eventually lose the need for mitochondria, which would slowly disappear as it seemed to be no longer needed. But as you might know from your biology class, or as you might have read somewhere else, mitochondria in general are super crucial for any eukaryotic cell. It's actually not just responsible for energy, it has a lot of other functions, including a lot of crucial control and intercell communication. As a matter of fact, it's so complex that it deserves its own video that's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. Side note, I've actually been super fascinated with mitochondria for a very long time, mostly because their origin and their function is extremely unusual. Today it's believed that these used to be bacteria previously, or basically they were individual bacteria living by themselves, but at some point something happened and they decided to kind of collaborate with some kind of a different cell, very likely some kind of an ancient archaea, eventually creating something that became a eukaryote. And in some of the previous research, which you can learn about in videos in the description, researchers actually found a mitochondria-like bacteria inside our guts. So basically it is some kind of a cousin or possibly some kind of an ancestor. Likewise, in a separate study, researchers even found the original archaea cell, today referred to as an Asgard cell, that very likely joined with these bacteria. These discoveries are somewhat recent, and so there's still quite a lot to learn. But because of their importance in a typical eukaryotic cell, it was always believed that most eukaryotes probably rely on them at all times. I mean, for example, in our own body, even though most cells, the red blood cells, don't actually contain mitochondria, most of the other cells contain anywhere from just a handful all the way to several thousand and sometimes even a million. For example, a typical muscle cell contains approximately 2000 because they are super important. But if we suddenly discover some kind of a eukaryotic organism that does not have mitochondria, it doesn't actually make a lot of sense for one simple reason. Mitochondria are super efficient at producing energy and eukaryotes require a lot of energy. So they must have either found a different way to consume energy very efficiently, so basically like a typical parasite, or maybe they discovered a new technique for converting energy without the use of oxygen. And well, up to this point, pretty much most discoveries previously were in extremely specific conditions. Like I said before, they were either parasites consuming energy directly from the host, or some of them were discovered to live inside guts in very oxygen-poor environments but in extremely nutrient-rich environments, allowing these cells to consume a lot of energy just from their surroundings without really doing much. 
Surprisingly, a lot of these types of cells seem to exist in various termites and even help them digest a lot of cellulose, which would be otherwise extremely difficult. Although strangely enough, one of the most recent discoveries was coming from the gut of chinchilla. It's not entirely clear what it does there yet, but it was definitely thriving, basically living a life by consuming everything from these little rodents. Technically, we can actually get these protists as well with this parasite known as Giardia lamblia that seems to even contain two nuclei, being very well known for causing major diarrhea. But once again, no mitochondria inside. Yet in this recent study, researchers discovered something entirely different. It was not a parasite, yet it was still a eukaryote that did not have mitochondria either. And this time it was also what's known as an extremophile. In this new study you can find any description, Shelby Williams and her team discovered completely new microscopic eukaryotes with one catching their eye almost right away. And that's the one you see right here, Scoliomonas litria. The first ever discovered eukaryote that's not a parasite, that doesn't live inside guts and seems to be entirely free living or basically living in an open environment yet without any mitochondria. Although in this case it caught their eye mostly because of its unusual shape, a very strange hunchback cell body and unusual twist in grooves that formed various curves inside the cell. In other words, this seems to be an extremely bizarre organism. But even more importantly, it seemed to completely lack all mitochondrial proteins. There were no leftovers, there were no surviving organelles, here there was basically nothing. And though this kind of made sense with parasites or with organisms inside the guts, it really made no sense for a free living organism. And this was confirmed through gene sequencing, where not a single mitochondrial protein was discovered inside the cell, which led to a new proposition. These cells now form their own clade. They name them Basque or Barcelona and Scoliomonas, unusual cells that seem to contain a major reduction in mitochondrial use, yet that seem to be not parasitic and live in open environments. And intriguingly enough, here nobody actually knows exactly how these organisms are able to acquire energy or basically how they can breathe and what they use to survive. Now we know that they live in anaerobic conditions or basically conditions without oxygen and so in that sense mitochondria would be completely useless but somehow over millions of years they were able to replace the need for mitochondria with something entirely different. But what it is nobody knows. And so because this is just the first study here scientists could not figure out how exactly these cells produce their ATP or how they survive and what they use for energy production. But they clearly have some really important anaerobic adaptations, which at some point will probably help us understand how certain advanced organisms can transition from being oxygen breathing to become exclusively anaerobic. Because at some point in the past, the ancestors of these cells definitely used oxygen as well. It just they don't anymore. And so quite a lot of things about this organism is currently a complete mystery. Which basically means that we'll probably come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos on mitochondria, which as I mentioned before, is going to come out in the next few weeks. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out all the links in the description below, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.